This video is designed for three types of people. For those who are intrigued in the game development process, those who are starting out, and also seasoned game developers looking how to optimize the hell out of a simple game. Throughout this video, I'll be using three obscure game development techniques that you might not know about. First, let's get the assets. Then I'll be adding the background and the floor into the scene. Now this is where the first technique comes into play. We need to make the floor move. To get started, let's make the floor move at a constant rate. But as you can see, it falls off the screen pretty quickly. For this, we get the length of the sprite, and when the entire length goes off the camera, it teleports two times the length in the opposite direction. Now we have a seamless scrolling floor. Next, let's create the pipes. Let's put one in and configure the colliders, then duplicate it, rotate it, and then flip it. The next step is to create the pipe spawner. We need to have access to four things. The pipe reference, how far along the pipe should spawn, how quickly each pipe spawns, and the height range of the spawned pipes. And now they move at the same rate as the floor. Let's now add the player into the scene with the flap animations. When setting up a player, we first need to configure the player input. For this, I am going to trigger an event when any key on the keyboard is pressed. Now to go into the player movement script, I will add two variables, the flap force and the gravity variable. Then every frame, the bird will decrease its velocity, and when the input event is triggered, it will send the bird upwards by changing its vertical velocity to a positive value. Now we have a working player controller. Now in the original Flappy Bird, the bird faces slightly upwards and nose dives when they start falling. To do this, we need to evaluate the current vertical velocity and change the rotation accordingly. Now this is where the second technique comes in. Instead of programming this relationship manually, we can instead use an animation curve. Here you can precisely define at what point the bird is facing upward and when it starts to nose dive. Let's test this out. Perfect. Next, let's add some sound into the game. I'm going to create a sound manager, which instantates new sounds on demand. Now when the player invokes the input event, it will play the flap sound. At the moment, the player just flies through the pipes. Let's fix that. On the player, this method will execute whenever another collider overlaps with the player collider. And this is where I'll use the final technique. This technique is not used by many Unity developers and is supremely underrated. This is where we use Unity events. When the player hits a pipe, I will invoke an event that will carry out a set of actions that I can define in the Unity editor rather than in the code. This event has two actions on it. It will stop the pipes from moving and stop the pipe spawner from spawning more pipes. The next step is to add the start and the end screen. With these two changes, we now have a complete game loop. The last step in the process is to add a scoreboard. Now I can add a game manager, which keeps track of the current score. Then go to our pipes and add a collider at the end of the pipes and add the gold tag to it. Now in the player movement code, it will detect when the player collider overlaps with the gold collider. Now we have an increasing score. For the high score, we only need to manage it at the end of the game. If we put all of this together, we have a finished game of Flappy Bird. Oh!